Okay, now we're going to go into the chapter of the effects of heat. Okay. Now, generally there's two very uh, simple ideas that we're going to talk about here. First one, we're going to talk about heating. Okay, when we talk about expansion, is when the objects are heated. What is actually expansion? Okay, expansion is actually an increase in size when the objects are heated. The other one that we're going to talk about is contraction. Okay, this occurs when the object is cooled. So what is it really about? Okay, it's actually when the object decreases in size. That's termed as contraction. When the object is cooled. So expansion is increase in size when objects are heated. So expansion and heated, these two goes together. Contraction and cool, they go together. Okay, when objects are cooled, they will contract. What is contract? It's a decrease in size. Most of you actually have learned this already. And expansion and contraction occurs in all three states. So when we talk about states here, we're referring to solid, liquid, and gas. So let's look at them individually. So example of the effects of heating for solids. So at room temperature, we can see this metal ball here. Okay, in actual fact, it's supposed to be able to pass through. So at room temperature, actually, the metal ball is able to pass through the ring. However, when heated, Okay, we say when heated, we are referring to when heated, when the metal ball, okay, when the metal ball is heated. And when the metal ball is heated, the metal ball is unable to pass through the ring. Why? Because when it's heated, comma, okay, because when the metal ball is heated, the ball increases in size. The ball expands. So when the ball expands, Okay, it's unable to pass through the metal ring anymore. So once again, we can go back to the same example. We say the room temperature, the ball is able to pass through the ring easily. Okay, pass through the ring. Now when it is cooled, the metal ball is able to pass through the ring more easily. Why? Okay, when you say cool, we are referring to the metal ball being cooled. Okay, it's cooled. Now what actually happens here? When it cools, Okay, what happened? Contraction occurs. So the ball decreases in size. Okay, contraction causes the ball to decrease in size. So obviously when the metal ball decreases in size, it passes through more easily. Next one, we talk about liquid. Okay. Okay, now when we have a tube here like this, okay, a hot test of colored water did in a beaker of hot water. So you can see the hot water is actually causing the liquid inside to expand. So take note of this. This is a little bit uh, interesting here. We talk about the level of, the level of colored water drops a little initially and then it rises. Okay, so the water level here, it will go down first, then it will come up. Okay, just drop a little bit, they will come up eventually. Okay, now, why is this the case here? So, why does it initially fall and then rises quickly? Because the glass wall will be heated up first. So if you look at the example here, can you see that the test tube here, there's a bit of a glass wall. So when you first heat it up, the glass wall will first expand. Okay, the glass wall will first expand. So glass wall, expand first. So obviously when the solid, when the container expands, the water level will drop. Okay, this this uh, flask is actually the container. Okay, the container that's holding the liquid. So when the container increases, the water level will drop. Okay, because the volume of the flask increases at the start. However, when the liquid gets heated up next, okay, it will expand and the volume will increase quickly hence the water level will rise again so in actual fact if we just ignore the flask we just talk about heating up the water the water will actually just increase okay obviously we are just referring to expansion again okay but then obviously if we now take into consideration of the flask over here okay it must first expand first that's why the water level will drop after that the liquid start to expand then that's why the water level increases. Okay, so that's why the explanation here. 
Now, what if we cool? Okay, we cool the colored water. This is just very simple. The colored water will just drop down. Why is it so? When the flask is being cooled, only the water inside will contract. Okay, I, please take note. Only the water inside the flask will contract to give a decrease in the volume, hence a drop in the water level. Then Ross is asking, why doesn't the flask this time contract first? The key here is because it is not so significant, or I should say it's not significant enough to give a decrease in the volume. Okay, so the contraction is not significant enough. That's why we actually ignore this. Okay, otherwise you would expect the water level to first go up, then after that generally it will come down. It will go up because the flask contract first, then after that it will go down a lot more for the water because the water contracts. So you need to take note of this. Why doesn't this phenomenon of the little up increase first? Right, because the contraction of the flask is not significant enough. This is the key reason. Next one, we look at gas. Okay, so what happens? You can see here, this is actually just to indicate how the air inside expands and contracts. So we use actually a so-called um, colored water droplet here. So when we hit the test the air inside here with our hands, the drop of colored water is observed to rise. Okay, and obviously when we place it in cold, the drop of colored water drops. Okay, why is it so? This one, okay, when it rises, this is because the air expands. This is the effect of heating. This one here, we talk about the air contracts. So we talk about the effect of cooling. Okay, so now, when we compare our solid, liquid and gas, in actual fact, for the same rise in temperature, let's say maybe we try to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, Okay, which state expands the most? Okay, in actual fact, the gas will expand the most, followed by liquid, followed by solid. Okay, so gas expands the most over here. So the question is, why is it so? So take note, this one you have learned in the kinetic particle theory, because gas particles are the weakest intermolecular attractive forces. So when it's heated up, okay, the particles will spread even more uh, further apart from each other, even further from each other. Okay, whereas for so liquid and for solid, you know that the force of attraction, this is strong, this is very strong. When you heat it up, solid doesn't have that much of an effect. Liquid has a little bit more, but the best effect comes in solid. Okay? Best effect from heating. Okay, why is it so? Because it has the weakest intermolecular force of attraction okay so that's why the particles can move far apart more freely when heated so just take note of this now some other phenomenon in terms of the effects of heating okay now the next one is why does ice float on water in winter in actual fact you can see here that all of us know that it in our drinks also the ice floats on water which means that ice is less dense than water okay, so in actual fact when water cools from 4 degrees to 0 degrees celsius it expands instead of contract this is just an exception okay i must write here this exception to the effect of heating slash cooling Okay, this is an exception that we are going to discuss here. Okay, only from only for water from four degrees to zero degrees, it behaves a little bit differently. Okay, when cooling down, it expands instead of contract. Okay, that's why water such as ice is less dense than water at four degrees Celsius. So that's why ice floats on water in winter also. That's how your animals, okay, like your polar bear and your seal survive. Otherwise, if the ice is more dense, it will be sinking at the bottom. So this is a something just, this is an exception, which is interesting to take note of. Okay, now, we have looked at um, some, look at an exception, we have looked at an exception, 
Okay, plus um, we have also discussed about the effects of heating in terms of solid, liquid and gas. We're going to go on to the next few parts here. Uh, we're going to talk about properties of expansion and contraction. Okay, when things expand and contract, in actual fact, especially for solid, okay, a large force is produced. Okay, that's the first thing you must take note of. A large force is produced. The next one you must take note of is that different substance expand and contract by different amounts okay, when they are heated and cooled. So with these two properties, actually we can take note of a few things over here. First one, if you look at because different substances expand and different ad expand and contract by different amounts, we have this thing called the bimetallic strip. Initially, the brass and the iron they are of the same length, a okay, same length. So what happens when we heat it up? The strip bends downward. Why? Because brass expands more when it's heated. So you can see here the brass it becomes longer than the iron. Okay, so this is the effect of heating. Your this is what we call your bimetallic strip. When you heat it up, one metal will expand more than the other because of the second property here. Different substances expand and contract at different amounts. Okay, the other thing is that obviously when the two metals, which one contract more? The one that expands more also contracts more. Okay, so you can see when it's contract, brass contracts more. Okay, that's why it bends upwards. Now brass becomes shorter than iron. So what's the purpose of this? It's actually used in refrigerator, electric iron, fire alarm, air conditioner. This is to regulate temperature. Okay, regulate temperature. Think of this term here, regulate temperature. Okay, so what happens that when you want your aircon, okay, aircon, air conditioners to be at 24 degrees Celsius, this is the one that helps it to control at 24. If it is too cold, it will switch off. If it is too hot, it will switch on. It's that kind of effect. Okay, because of the way how the bimetallic strip bends. Okay, now, this is the last slide already. Okay, sorry, second last slide. Okay, now, another one is we talk about the heat-resistant glassware. Okay, why do we want to have such glassware? Okay, we generally use it in the kitchen and the science lab. Because we tend to heat it up very often, imagine it expands too much. Okay, or expands too little. Expands too much, we're going to have a problem. Okay, because the glass will tend to crack. Okay, when you have heat-resistant glassware, they do not crack so easily. So that's why it prevents the glassware from crack when heating or cooling because they are heat resistant so they do not crack so easily. Now to conclude, okay, take note of the first thing here, solid, liquid and gas expand when heat is absorbed. Okay, expand when heat is absorbed and contracts when heat is given out. This application over here, okay, just take note. Mainly, you uh, must remember is actually your bimetallic thermometer and your thermostat. Thermostat is the thing that they use in your aircon and stuff like this. Okay, the negative effect, all of this here, okay, don't worry too much about it. Key is you must remember how the effect of heating and cooling works, okay, contraction and expansion, which is based on this first slide. Expansion equals increase in size, contraction equals decrease in size. It has effects on solid, liquid and gas. So that's all for this with regards to the effects of heat.